Right. So this is um, video B of test preparation, part one. So now let's go straight into it and uh, begin to unveil some few important details here with regards to, 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 to companies. Right, so what you need to take note about uh, companies here is that there are two groups. Okay, so with companies, they can be classifi classified as follows. So what I'm showing is the classification of companies. Classification of companies. So what happens when the classification of companies have got two groups, which is namely profits, companies, and then you've got what you call non-profit uh, companies. All right. Now let's have a distinction between these. What are profit companies? These ones are incorporated for profit gain. Are we together? Whereas with these yes. ones, they are not incorporated for profit gain, but they're incorporated to the benefit of the public. All right. They are incorporated to the benefit of the public. There's a difference. Profit companies, they're incorporated for profit gain for who? For the owners of the business organization. Whereas with this one, non profit companies, they're incorporated to the benefit of the general public. That's where the, the key difference is. Are we together? Yes. Right. Now, let's talk about these profit companies a little bit. Profit companies and see, okay, so what kind of companies are these? So, under profit companies, you've got public companies. With public companies, they are, um, you know, yes, they are profit companies. And with public companies, under normal circumstances, they end like with, for example, I'm gonna put do like this. I'm gonna just simply say company name, and then at the end of the company name, they would have something like L, LTD, in front of them. Are we together? That's with public company. So, for example, you can have something like ABC Limited. When you see something like that with an ending only with LTD, it means you're dealing with a public company. Are we together? Yes. Right. Very important characteristic that you need to, to take note of. Right. So remember what am I dealing with here? I'm still dealing with, with profit companies. So I'm, I'm I've started with um with uh, with the public companies so that you understand some bit of characteristics about public companies. So the company name would end with LTD in France. So this was just a typical example of of such. And another characteristic about public companies that I think it's vital that I feel that it's vital for you to uh, to be aware of is that with profit uh, with public companies, okay, they issue shares. So eligible to issue shares to the public. Right, so they are eligible to issue shares to the general public, right? Um, then of course, you also need to know the advantages and the disadvantages about such, such an organization. But uh, we, they don't say much about it here in your prescribed textbook, but I'm just trying to point out some of the some of this, because I've already given you the answers on that. So just, you know, pointing it out. Then of course, another group of uh, profit companies, besides public companies, you've got what we call private. Private yes. companies, so with private companies, here's how it works. So the company name ends with PTY, limited like that so you could have something like 
A, B, C, P, T, Y, L, T, D. The moment you see a company with a, with a prefix, I mean, sort of suffix that ends like that. So you have the name of the company as A, B, C, and then the ending part of that company name, it has PTY limited. It means you're dealing with a, with a private company. Are we together, young men? Yes. Okay. So let me show you another category. Besides, I, I don't wanna say much about a private company there, uh, but you also have what you call state-owned, state-owned companies. So with state-owned companies, again, they also fall under the category of, of companies. Are we together? So what are the yeah. characteristics of state-owned companies? So with a state-owned company, the company name would look like this. It would have S O C in front. So it's the company name, and then it would have S O C in front. Let me give you a typical example. Telcom. Okay. S O C. Yeah. Okay, it will be Telcom Limited, but I mean it's 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 a state-owned company. Are we together? Yes. Yeah. Yes, hundred percent. Yes. All right. Perfect. 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 So those are typical examples of profit companies. So that they can make, they may ask you, you know, for 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 the category of these, and then lastly but not least, uh, you've got what they call personal liability companies, personal liability companies. So what you need to know about this? It's pretty simple. Uh, with the personal liability company, it can also meet, uh, so it's almost similar to that of a private company. So yeah, it's pretty much like a private company, even the way it's named and stuff, pretty much like a, like a private company. Are we together? Yes. Okay. This was just to summarize profit companies. Now let's talk about public company. So with public companies, these are typical organizations that are registered for public benefit. So there's no profit made that is distributed to anyone. So public companies, here's the drill about them. This could range from, for example, orphanages, churches, just to name a few. These are what you call public companies. Are we together? Or oh, non profit organizations, non profit organizations. Those are your public companies, very important. I think uh, this is pretty much all you need to know uh, in terms of the differences between those, those type of companies. So far, so good, young man? Uh, yes. Okay, any questions? Mm, uh, no, not at all. Okay. Now, I want you to look at the distinction between these two fields of accounting. But today, I want to make sure we exhaust chapter one so much that when you get into the exam, you are prepared, right? Yes. Yeah. So let's look at the different fields in accounting. What are the different fields of not in accounting? So there is what we call financial accounting. Then there's what we call management accounting. The two are not the same, okay? I'm going to show you some differences. So with financial accounting, the primary focus is to report on historic information about an entity 
two third party. Are we together? Very important. Very, very important. And this comes So the reporting happens in form of financial statements. That's with regards to financial accounting. Now let's talk about management accounting. Let's talk about management accounting. So with management accounting, it's, it's essentially so what management accounting focuses on, so it's essentially focused on historic, present, and futuristic information. Are we together, young men? Yes. And mostly the information is intended for internal use by management. Did you see the difference? One, the focus is to report on historic information only about an entity, to who? To a third party, meaning to say it is, it's aimed um, for external use. Are we together? Whereas with this one, it's aimed for what? Internal. Internal, internal use. use by management. That's the key difference between these two different fields of accounting. So far, so good? Okay. Yes. But we need to make sure that these things are key, right? Yes, yes. Right, right. Yeah, so with financial accounting, uh, like I said, the emphasis is more on the historic information. So if you go on page 16, do you see the difference? Yeah, I see the differences there. You see the differences, right? Yes. Right. Mark those ones. M -M 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 what is it? NB. So with financial accounting, it reports to stakeholders outside the organization. So that's what I meant when I'm saying third party there. What about management accounting? It reports to stakeholders inside of the organization. For what purposes? Planning, controlling, directing, motivation, and performance mm -hmm. evaluation. So meaning to say it's used for internal use by, by management. So management, what do they do? They perform management functions, taking you to business management. So what are the business? Uh, what are the business management? I mean, what are the management functions that managers perform? Number one, managers plan, managers control, managers direct, managers motivate. All right, and managers evaluate, monitor the use of resources in the business. Okay, number two, on on financial accounting, there's emphasis on summaries of financial consequences of past events. That's what I meant when I'm saying that it's focus, it's on what? On historic information. Whereas with uh, management accounting, the emphasis is on decisions affecting the future of the organization. That's futuristic information, but you cannot look into the future unless you look at the present and what you have done in the past, which is historic information as well. Are we together? Yes. Beautiful. Then you can read off the rest of those ones for yourself, sir. But so far, so good. Yeah, yeah, now I'm understanding. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Right. I want you to go on page. All right. What I'll do tomorrow, I would on okay, but, but I think for today we have to, to stop it here. What I'll cover with you for tomorrow, it will be from page 19. Okay. Yeah, it will be from right. page 19. I'll cover some info from page 19 tomorrow. That's when I'll introduce you to the accounting process.
Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So okay. yeah, I'll introduce you to the accounting, uh, to the accounting process, which you'll see on page 20. If you go on page 20, it's exactly what I was yes. explaining earlier when I said the accounting process starts with what? It starts with with source documents. All right. So when you're looking at a transaction, right? Transaction will take place yes. and there'll be recording in source documents. If you look on page 20, so from this, um, so a transaction takes place, it will be captured where? In the source documents. So a source document, it's a summary of transactions. These transactions, mm -hmm. they have to be captured in the general. I mean, so in general, subsidiary general, which is what they call general, summarize the source document. And what's the next step after that? You've got the general ledger, which summarizes the generals or totals from the generals. And you have what you call account balances in the general ledger. From the general ledger, you will have a trial balance, balance. which is uh, summaries of the general ledger. And then what? After the trial balance, you're supposed to have financial statements. Does it make sense? Yes, yes. Now, but financial statements, it happens at year end. So this is a year end process. But this okay. happens monthly. Okay. This happens at year end. This happens at year end. So financial statements are produced once per year. You can have projections, yes, but normally the actual financial statements of a company, they are, they are generated at month, month end. So that's what they're showing you on page 20 there. I've just tried to simplify it for you. I show yes, it here. Yes. So, so we're gonna discuss more about it. We're gonna try and do more of those tasks and stuff like that. That you you know to strengthen your understanding of these things. Okay, no problem. Sir. All right. Cheers, buddy. Have a good one. Any questions for me? Uh, yes, I have a question, sir. Um, Go ahead. So, actually, it's not a question. I I just have to tell you that um, I have something due for business management on Friday. What? I have I have something due for business management on Friday. I, like